Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 5 of Robot X, the reconfigurable sci fi bipedal robot. <laughs> Last time we pretty much finished the mechanical and electronic build and we had some rudimentary motions from this. So we managed to get it to crouch down, move side to side. There's a couple of mechanical tweaks I need to make. and We need to add some inertial measurements units this time to make it stable. And I'm hoping it's going to do something that looks like it's taking steps in this episode. So let's have a closer look at what we need to do to get started. Before we try to make it do anything too fancy, I need to do a little redesign. I actually found that in testing, these things broke. So here's one uh, where the ears have snapped off. And you can see pretty much that in fact, um, it's broken a little bit across the build lines, but mostly it's broken through them. So uh, it snapped as if it was a traditional piece of plastic. And that shows how good the layer bonding is in this ColorFab HT. Uh, but, but nonetheless, there's quite a lot of load pushing down on here, of course, because it's got the whole weight of the robot on there. So what I really need to do is support this piece better, and this rotates on an axis here with this end stop. So uh, basically I'm going to build a thing that comes around the back, and it's supported on another peg. And obviously the, there's four of these, two on each ankle, and they pretty much take the whole load of the robot as this foot tips. So here's my redesign. I've just kept that piece at the front, so that will have the swivelling axis through with the stopper on. And that uh, is coupled into the red part with the captive nut, so that's clamped on. But then at the back of this, I've got another hole in the red part that I've now brought all the way around. So I've got another swivelling piece and a bit of 6mm stainless will be held in this block at the back. So that's the replacement heel. And of course it holds them on each side. So that should just give it some more support. And um, I'm pretty sure that'll be strong enough given the hips haven't failed. Um, and those are pretty much more of a direct traditional universal joint sort of link. So that should give free movement to this piece in two axis. And that should all be good. So let's get those printed and we'll just check they're strong enough. Here comes one of those parts. I'm printing in 30% infill. It's about a four or five hour print it looks like for that big chunk. Here they are. So we just need to install some captive nuts and some grub screws and we can get all of those installed. I fitted the replacement parts, so these are now supported at the back and the front with a bit of 6mm stainless rather than just at the front as they were before. So it all seems to work still. But it should be much stronger. Last time we had the robot just leaning side to side, just sending angles to uh, each of the uh, PID controllers that control those hips and ankles. But what we're going to actually try and do is put an inertial measurement unit in each leg that actually measures the angle in space. So we'll have one in each leg and we'll actually use that to drive the robot. So we can drive the angle here and that should mean any bend in the robot where the legs will flop together. Um, we can compensate for because we're actually setting an angle here by measuring its angle in space so we can keep that at an angle and compensate with the motors. So that should mean that we should be able to lean side to side by setting actual angles as we go and obviously modifying those hip and ankle joints as we do so. Um, the eventual aim will be to have one in the body as well so we can actually modify the body position so instead of sort of leaning like this to take steps we can actually do this and we can swing the hips to take steps. The first thing I'm going to do is fit two IMUs, one in each leg, and see if this plan works at all. So instead of just setting an angle on the joint, we actually set an angle on the IMU. We have another PID controller driving the joint PID controllers. So it's a bit like bb 8 side-to-side -side axis. So what we currently have is a PID controller here. The set point is the angle of the joint that we want to set it to. The output, of course, goes to the motor, and the input goes to the pot. So it tries to match the pot with the angle that we give it there, or the number that we give it. It drives the motor accordingly. So what you're now going to do is add another PID controller at the top here, where the set point is an actual angle in space. Our uh, output there, of course, goes to the set point of this PID controller. And our input here is the IMU. So it tries to match the actual angle in space with our set point, And it drives this piece, which we've already got, as if it's a servo. The IMUs I'm using are the MPU6050, and each one of them here is coupled to an Arduino Pro Mini. 
Now the MPU6050 has an accelerometer and a gyro in for each of three axes, so it's a six axis IMU. Of course I'm only using tilt side to side, and I've already made little mountings with the holes in here to mount to the aluminium extrusion. And the reason I've coupled each one with the Pro Mini is so I can basically turn this into a serial IMU, eventually there'll be three, and I've got three spare serial interfaces on the Arduino DU. Now these are I2C devices, now I could use an I2C multiplexer or something, but basically the library support, which is the Jeff Roberg I2C dev library, um, relies on each one having an interrupt for a start, and also it's not that easy to hack to actually uh, multiplex that library to deal with three IMUs. Um, so basically I'm just going to read each one individually and send the data over serial, and then we'll just read that in in the loop. Right, so here's my IMU data you can see just in the serial terminal there, and if I move the IMU around we should see that we get uh, that angle varies of course, and it's pretty good, it always comes back pretty much to zero, I've got a 0.5 of a degree on there, the table's not quite flat, it was fine when I set it up, um, and obviously if we put the IMU on its end there we should get roughly 90, and uh, short of the cable bending it and influencing it, it comes back pretty much to where we have before, so that looks pretty good. Now I have clocked this down to 50 hertz from the default of 100, and in the library, Arduino Library's MPU 6050, uh, there's a file called Motion Apps 20, and um, if we open that and scroll down, if I can find it quickly, there's a bunch of stuff in here, but basically the FIFO rate, you set this last digit here, and the formula is 200 hertz divided by 1 plus the value, so I've put in 3, so 200 divided by 1 plus 3 is 200 divided by 4, which is 50 hertz. So uh, that's quite important, my main loop on my Arduino DU runs at uh, 100 hertz, so the, all the IMUs are going half the speed, so it's got plenty of time to read that data within the loop. So um, that seems to be working pretty well. Now I'm only outputting one value here, the uh, IMU is capable of actually three axis, um, but I only need one for side to side tilt, so I've commented the rest out here, and I'm outputting just the roll uh, with four decimal places, as you can see with the new line character afterwards. Okay, so I've got one IMU fitted in each leg here, and I've uh, put a little cable clip in again to restrain the cable, and that goes up to the main electronics. Around the front here, both those cables come up, we've got the reset pins tied together, and we have a switch there so I can reset both IMUs and bring them up cleanly together. The rest of the uh, data there goes through the level matches and into two serial ports. Now the actual MPU6050 is a 3.3 volt devices natively, but they've got a level matcher on the breakout board, so that's why I've tied them to 5 volt Pro Minis. I'm dealing with the level matching at this end to get to 3.3 volts on the Arduino DU. So on the Arduino DU, I'm just reading that data in, so I'm currently reading the remote in fact on Serial 3, the first IMU on Serial 1, and the next one on Serial 2. So of course we're breaking those bits out for the remote still. Uh, I've got my counts going up and I'm writing that data out, so now we can quickly see that the... Um, We've got the count there to show the programs running, and we've got two IMUs. One's roughly a degree, and one's minus half a degree, and that's because the robot's not quite in the middle. Um, but if I just shift the robot uh, side to side, the legs are slightly spread apart, so obviously um, we're not getting zero on both. But if I just move the robot around a little bit there, we can see the data... Uh, vary slightly as I do so, and if I grab hold of the remote and turn the motors on... We'll just shift that one side a little bit. We should see all that data vary there as it does so. So we can see that data going, both of them going positive and both of them going negative at the same time. So I've now implemented some code to drive those angles with the IMUs. So I've got uh, set points here to set plus or minus 30 and the PID controller will try and match that, so it's using the input there being the IMU value, does the compute, and the output basically goes to the original set point setting the joints, and those are the four pots, the four PID controllers associated with those angles. I have put a minus and plus two on these to hold the legs slightly apart, uh, to give it that sort of spaced stance, and those are reconfigurable of course, but essentially it's adding the output of that new PID controller, uh, to the set points of the original ones, so actually driving the angles now with the IMU, which I'm driving with the remote. So of course the effect of this now is that I'm actually driving the angles in space rather than just driving the joint positions, so it should never actually overshoot those angles no matter what I do, because essentially I'm actually driving them with PID controllers that take care of hitting them pretty accurately. So now if we turn this on and uh, make it lean side to side, driving the angles with these two buttons, we should find it doesn't really matter what I do. 
It always hits the angle and never builds up momentum. Now I'm just doing this manually at the moment with the remote, but what I can of course do is read the inputs and the set points of each pitch controller and I'll know exactly when it's got to the angle, so then I can set up a loop that makes it go back the other way or does the next thing in the state machine rather than relying on timers. So then the whole dynamics of the thing are driven by motor speed and by actually hitting specific angles in space. And of course we've got another IMU to implement in the body and that does something a little bit different. The ones in the legs keep it parallel this way, the one in the body keeps it um, like this, which actually helps move its body back to balance and that's entirely how the gonk droid balanced. We don't have that IMU yet, but that's going to hopefully give it a much more human gait. Right, and now I've done just that and I've configured up the state machine so that basically it looks at the angles and when they get past a certain point, it comes back the other way. So let's just turn that on and flick on my switches and we should see it happily uh, doing that without any manual intervention. It does turn slightly and the legs are a bit loose and I think one is bent more than the other so I need to trim up those centre points. But essentially that's looking alright. So now I'm going to try and get it to take um, the other foot off the ground. You can see it's shuffling along so it's not putting any load on the other foot. So we'll try and get it to take each foot off the ground as it does so. Well I've just done a little bit more code to bend the legs so if we turn those on now when it's in the uh, angle mode if I press these green buttons it bends one leg and if I just press it once it bends it and it returns it when it gets to the target. So again that's another state machine which is basically looking for the actual angle of the joint. It's not using the angle in space but it's not using timing, it's using the motor speed and the actual positions. I've now coded in those leg lifts to be part of my other state machines. It's a bit hit and miss and it has to move its whole mass sideways to get that leg off the ground because the legs actually weigh quite a bit but um, it almost does work so if I'm very careful we can get that going. It does better on one side than the other lifting the leg. So you'll notice this leg comes right off the ground. That one does I think almost. I think the heel is still on the ground but uh, there we go it's sort of uh, leaning over further one way than the other and even though I've tried to bias it the other way I'm not quite sure why that is. So I think we need to do that faster so it can get its legs off but also it's moving that whole body parallel so it'd be much better if the body could tilt so it could swing its hips. Right I fixed it uh, I found that the uh, zero positions of the IMU weren't uh, basically accurate because the slot in the aluminium extrusion is wider than the bolt so I've screwed them on, they're not quite at zero so I've just added uh, small numbers to them to get them to both be the same and everything else is totally symmetrical now which uh, makes me feel really happy so now it pretty much works, we'll just let it have a little go and uh, find its balance and we should find that it's lifting uh, both feet off the ground pretty much and it's almost symmetrical I think that's pretty good in terms of its step height and the amount it's leaning each side so I've just put some grease on my lead screws so they're not so squeaky and I put fresh batteries in I still need to do something about the battery monitoring and power management and I think that's working pretty well so bear in mind at the moment the legs effectively from a point of view of stability are operating independently. They've both got their own IMUs that are driving their angles. It just happens the motors run at similar speeds and that's why it moves side to side um, uniformly. Obviously there's nothing tying those together and that's where the third IMU will come in to go and sway those axis and get some overall stability. So let's get on and implement that. I'd also like to say the white sheet is there so you can see it more clearly, not because it's CGI. Here is the third IMU which again is another Pro Mini with the MPU 6050 the same as the other two and that's going to go into another serial port. I've put that IMU in the body there so this is where the battery compartment is so it's got this little front on so uh, nothing hits it and damages it. So this is currently on the part of the droid that's stationary and if you remember we've got another pivot point here so this whole top is going to lean backwards and forwards to stabilise and that IMU in fact is going to give me two axes for side to side and front to back there'll be another actuator driving the body backwards and forwards with variable weights that we can put on this bar. So I'm not sure whether I want that IMU positioned on the piece that's supposed to be stationary, stabilised by the body, or whether I want to put it on the piece that's moving. So it really depends whether I'm using the hips like this to stabilise, or I'm using the top of the body to stabilise like this. 
So at the moment I've left the lead quite long and we can decide where we want to put it in the future. Now the IMU is going via a level matcher of course to 3.3 volts to one of the other serial interfaces and that's uh, all of the three extra serial interfaces apart from serial zero which is uh, the one that's attached to the USB programming port. And the plan was to have the remote with the Bluetooth interface going into serial zero so I could either type that integer in that comes from the remote on the console or have the remote to send it but for the life of me I can't get anything to work on these pins on serial zero um, and someone else contacted me with the same problem on the Arduino Due um, so I don't really know why that is um, obviously it works with the USB programming interface and on other Arduinos you can then just wire those pins um, and use that to send and receive serial to other bits of hardware but I can't make it work on this one with the serial zero pins so I'm using three serial interfaces for the three IMUs serial one, two and three um, but that doesn't leave me anywhere to plug the remote in so in fact what I've done is connected the Bluetooth interface via the level shifter to a 3.3 volt Arduino Mini uh, Pro Mini which is sat down here and um, in fact that takes the integer, strips out the bits and then it sends it to um, the digital pins which are plugged into some digital pins on the Arduino Due and that means uh, that it's actually just reading digital pins there so that's actually taking care of the remote control instead of reading it on a serial port. If anyone knows how to make serial zero work on this uh, through the pins then let me know. Right, I've integrated the body IMU now so it provides overall stability and this is very much like how the gong droid worked where when you tilt it one way its legs tilt in that direction and basically that provides stability when it gets knocked about by taking its feet off the ground or whatever and the gong droid didn't have the IMUs in the legs so now I'm using that body IMU and its PID controller in this robot to feed the position I want the legs to go to in space using those IMUs so now it's kind of stable so if I um, power this up And if we push him around a bit, we should see it tries to stabilise. So you can see sometimes we get this oscillation back again and then it corrects itself. So that still needs tuning out. Most of the time it's fine. And I can still drive the legs to the angles we want. So if I push this button here, it'll still go over that way. And it will come back, but it will come back dampened using that body IMU to balance. So if I tip it over that way and push it around a bit. Oh, there we get that lean back the other way again. So we can see it's dampening the motion there and stabilising itself. So that should make it walk pretty well. So we need to now try integrating that into its alternate stepping, preemptively leaning side to side and hopefully that gives us a really stable gait. So essentially what's happening here is we've got our PID controllers we had before, so we've got the two leg PID controllers in each leg. One is of course turning the legs into servos, setting the actual angles and we've got one of those on each joint. Those are being driven by the PID controllers that are reading the IMUs in each leg and those are basically setting an angle. So I set the angle in space and that drives the position and it tries to meet the angle. And I've got this other IMU and another PID controller in the body. So that's got currently a set point of zero trying to keep the body upright. I can alter that, although it doesn't work very well until it's in motion because it tries to mash the feet into the ground. But basically that PID controller is taking the body IMU and that's driving the new set point. So basically the new zero point for that angle in space in each leg. So at this point here, I can come in and put different angles in, which offset that. So I add it to the output of this body PID controller and IMU. And that means I can still drive these to an angle in space, but using this as an offset for stability. So that's what's happening when I'm pressing those buttons. I'm just putting values in here. So it leans side to side, but it still uses this to offset that value to keep stable. So as the final tune-up of the episode, what we're actually doing is driving its legs to positions in space and also deciding when the legs should bend and when it should lean back the other way by when it achieves different angles. On top of that, we've got that body IMU and PID controller transposing stability over the top. So it does have to shift quite a bit because it's moving quite slow. And at the moment, I can't go any faster because its feet are slippery. So that's something I need to resolve in the future. So it's a, it looks a bit unstable, but it should actually stay stable. So I'm going to just help it to start with. There we go. And of course, if it overbalances, it should wait before achieving the angle before it does the next thing, like that. But you can see its feet are a bit slippery. I don't think everything's perfectly centered because it still has 
more trouble picking his right foot up than his left foot. But it seems like the body is hitting the right angles, so I need to look at why that is. And of course it's twisting quite a bit there as well, but we can see we've still got that uh, stability that I've tuned up now, so it fights me and tries to stabilise, but it doesn't oscillate anymore. And if I uh, hit the switch again, it should do its little step sequence. So two of the main issues I'm having, of course, are the feet being slippery, so we need to print some sort of soles for that. And we could consider pressure sensors in those as well, so it knows where its feet are on the ground. Particularly when we come to the front to, front to back stability, that's going to be quite important as well. We may just put grips on though, and I'll do that next time. The other issue is, every time I configure it and try and film it, the battery's gone a little bit more flat, and so it doesn't perform quite as well. So I end up going back, adjusting something, and trying to catch it on camera. So essentially what I need to do is read the battery voltage with an analog in, and then regulate the maximum motor speeds. At the moment I'm doing about half or just over half the maximum motor speed we could do. So I need to turn that value up as the, as the uh, battery comes down. So I may put some little battery meters on that measure the actual output of say the hip motors and see how badly that's affected. I may have a manual knob to, to start with to tweak it up and then we'll work out how to calibrate it so that we always get the same velocity on the motors which will of course affect its stability. There's also still slack in the joints of course because the actuators aren't very good. So this whole thing with it being off centre slightly, it would appear in fact one ankle is looser than the other which may be why it doesn't step evenly. So I may need to have a look at that but we'll see what happens once its feet don't slip. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. Also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots where you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. And of course all these projects are funded mostly from Patreon. I also have a t-shirt store where you can get X-Robots merchandise. There's a limited edition design which expires at the end of March 2017. And hopefully another one after that if you're watching in the future. So check out those links in the description to this video. Alright, that's all for now.